which include the Ayma Arba'a, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, Imam Malik bin Asal, uh, Anas, Rahimahullahu Ta'ala. And after them, all the Muhaddithun, Mufassirun, all the way down to the Ulama, they went. Mulana Ashwali Thanwi, Rahimahullah, Mulana Qasim Nanouti, Rahimahullah, Shaykh Al Ajim Wal Arab, and Mursha Kashmir, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and many other scholars. I made this claim, now it's time for me to prove this claim, inshallah. First, I would like to start off with the Quran verses. Quran verses. And I said that our aqidah is to consign the meaning, to accept the apparent words, to accept the apparent words and to consign the meaning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to deny the modality and howness. This is the claim I made. Inshallah, I would like to start off with Quranic verses, moving on to the Sunnah, then Ijma, and then Court of Eminent Scholars, Uma Tawfiqi illa billah. First verse which I would like to mention is the verse لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ This is a very important verse and this verse governs everything. And in the chapter of Creed and Aqeedah this is a verse which holds great importance. Inside this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ That there is nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He is the all seeing and all hearing. So there is nothing like Allah. He used the word kaf. Kaf means like, to show similarity. He's also mentioned mithil. Mithil also means like similarity. So there are two particles in one word, kaf and mithil. Laysa ka mithlihi shay. There is nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has mentioned kaf to negate similarity. He's mentioned mithil to also negate similarity. The question arises that why has Allah mentioned two particles which give the same meaning? The ulama of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah and the ulama of Dewan have clearly stated that the word kaf down here. The word, the word kaf here, it comes to negate similarity inside sifat. Kaf. And mithal, it comes to negate similarity inside that being. I.e. there is nothing like Allah inside his attributes and inside his being. Laysa ka mithlihi shay. Nothing like Allah. And then Allah has mentioned, wa huwa sami al basir that is the whole, all seeing and all hearing. The question arises, now look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first negated anything to be like him. And then he's established sifat. Which sifat has he established? My question. Which sifat has he established? as sami and Al-Basir. Those sifat which are sifat aqliya. Yes. Those sifat that are, can, are derived from our intellect and Quran and Hadith. And these are those sifat which are sif, sifat kamila. They're sifat with complete perfection. Some people use this, that look, Allah established Sami and Basir, therefore he establishes his hand, establishes Shin. We have to contemplate, look, what has he established? He established Sifat Kamila. Those Sifat that are perfect, those Sifat that are 
complete. I would like to give a few quotes regarding this verse. First, of Imam Qurtubi rahimahullah ta'ala. Imam Qurtubi has mentioned regarding this verse. <coughs> Imam Qurtubi rahimahullah has mentioned regarding this verse. This is Tafsir al-Qurtubi in front of me. Volume 15 and 16. On this verse, Imam Qurtubi rahimahullah ta'ala mentions Laysa kamithri shay, there is nothing like Allah. And then he discussed the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And especially those sifat which gives the impression of deficiency. Like the hand of Allah, the eye of Allah. He says, فَلَا تُشَابِ بَيْنَهُمَا فِي الْمَعْنَى الْحَقِيقِ فِي الْمَعْنَى الْحَقِيقِ There is no comparison between Allah and His creation in the literal meaning. In the literal meaning. This is what Imam Qurtib Allah mentions. Imam Fakhuddin Razi Allah has also mentioned something similar. This is at Tafsir Al Kabir, volume number 27 and volume number 28. Inside here, Imam Fakhuddin Razi has mentioned that Ihtajja Ulama al Tawheed, that the Ulama of Tawheed and Aqeedah, they have taken this verse as evidence. Qadiman wa hadithan. The former and the latter, all of the ulama. Behind the ayah fi nafi kawni ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from jism, a body which is made of aba body limbs. Bin Ba says Allah's got body limbs. <laughs> Bin Fawzan says Allah's got a jism. <laughs> Ibn Taymiyyah has mentioned in Fatawa that Allah's got aba body limbs, but of eating and drinking to do actions. <laughs> And وَحَاصِلْ فِي الْمَكَانِ وَالْجِهَانِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from place and free from direction. Inshallah, more evidence on this will be given regarding the place and direction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Moving further. Moving further regarding this verse. Imam Fakhdi Razi Ali mentions that some people, I had one brother said to me, one brother said to me, that brother, you consign the meaning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You say that the hand of Allah, the foot of Allah, the eye of Allah, we consign the meaning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because if we accept the literal meaning, we will fall inside tashbih, we will fall inside anthropomorphism, we will fall inside giving similarity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said, how can that happen? He said to me, if I say human's leg, and a uh, dog's leg. Does that mean they're the same? No. I told him, brother, well, you have failed to understand what the word similarity means. You have failed to understand what the word? If I say human's leg, your leg, dog's leg, aunt's leg, elephant leg, to you, they might not be the same. Why? Because in your small mind, they're not the same at all. But if you look inside the books of Lugha, inside the books of Tafsir, you will come to know that these five types of legs, even though they're not the same in color, they're not the same in size, but they're all same in being a body and being a limb. Even though the dog's leg, your leg, aunt's leg, elephant's leg, they're not the same in color. They're not the same in size. But they all are same in being a limb and a part of a body. This is what we negate from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from this. From body limbs. Because if we don't consign the meaning, then we have accepted a body limb for Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has got a hand, but we don't know how he looks like. Now, don't know if it's five fingers, six fingers, seven fingers, big, small, black, white. Now, we have to consign the meaning. This doesn't matter how big he is, how small he is. And then using this analogy of dog's leg, aunt's leg, elephant's leg, to prove that he is absurd. That's why Imam Fakhdi Razi Abdullah is mentioned 
that sifat being different, it doesn't mean the that is different. If the qualities are different, it doesn't mean the being is different. Even though the elephant's leg, dog's leg, ant's leg, they might be different in size and color, but in that they are all body limbs. They all jism, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from. لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرِ Now, those brothers who say Allah has got a hand. He's got a hand, but we don't know the howness. We don't know the modality and the corporeality. To, the, to them is this question. Allah is saying, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ There is nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Isn't accepting the literal meaning of the hand going against his vest? Allah is saying there's nothing like him. You are saying, no, he's got a hand. Allah is saying there's nothing like him. You are saying, no, he's got an eye. Hmm. Second verse. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say that Allah is one and only. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Very famous surah, mashallah. Everybody reads this in the salah. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Now, what does ahad mean? Ahad means the one and only inside his that and inside his sifat. Therefore, if a person says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is complete tawheed? Complete tawheed is to accept Allah as being one inside his that and inside his sifat. sifat. Now if we say inside his sifat, Allah has got a hand. But we don't know how the hand is. What are we doing? We're causing deficiency in the reality of tawheed. We call in deficiency in the reality of Aqeedah. That's why Imam Ibn Hajar Asqalani Rahimahullah in Fathul Bari. Fathul Bari in volume 13. In volume 13. He has mentioned page 444. He has mentioned 25 different meaning of the word hand. 25 different <coughs> meaning for the word word hand. Now he's mentioned the literal meaning is a body limb. Jariha. Literal meaning of hand is every dictionary in the world will tell you this. And there are many other metaphorical meanings like the power of Allah the ni'mah, the blessing of Allah, so on and so forth. I don't want to go into all the 25 meanings, but I'll just give you the reference. In Kitab al-Tawheed, Kitab al-Tawheed, where Imam Bukhari has mentioned the Quranic verse, Lima khalaq tu biyadai. In there he has mentioned the 25 different meanings of yet. Now these brothers, mashallah, who have got a great zeal of establishing the literal meaning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want to ask them a question. My question is, that the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has 25 meanings. Like Hafiz ibn Hajar Asqalani as Shafi has mentioned. There are some literal meaning and there's some metaphorical meaning. Which one do you want to take? Take the metaphorical meaning. No akhi. Majazi meaning. This is tahrif, is interpolation, is denying the qualities of Allah. We can't take the majazi meaning. Okay, you've only got one choice now. You either take the do, uh, you, you either do uh, you either take tafweed or the literal meaning. You either do tafweed, consign the meaning like the the true salaf have done, or you take the literal meaning. They say, Akhi, we can't take the literal meaning. We can't we can't take the tafweed. We can't consign the meaning. Why? Because Imam Ibn Taymi has mentioned a tafweed min sharri aqwal ahlil bidati wal ihad that doing tafweed and consigning the meaning is amongst the worst statements of the it as a bid'ah innovators and those are heretics. We can't do that. So we tell him, okay, you've only got one choice now. That is to take the hakiki meaning. And the hakiki meaning of yad in all of the dictionaries in this world which we are living on is nothing but a body limb. Yes. So brother, but we can't take that too. We can't take that. We, we take the original meaning, but we can't take the body limb. This is your own ta'weed. This is your own interpretation. Which dictionary in the world says that hand means take the hand in the ritual meaning but say it's not body. It's a contradiction. This is a homemade in 
Homemade interpretation, homemade ta'wil. So we take the hakiki meaning, the literal meaning, but we deny the body for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where is this interpretation? Nowhere. The hakiki meaning is a body limb. Which is made of blood and flesh. So if you're going to take the hakiki meaning, then you have to take the body and flesh and the body limb into consideration. If you're going to say where we take the literal meaning, but we deny the body, then this is such an interpretation that no one has ever done. And this is a ta'wil that no one has ever done. This is actually a ta'wil of their own. Further, I would like to mention the third verse, which is in the same surah, Allahu Samad, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is independent. This I have in front of me, Tafsir al Baydawi, Al Musamma Anwar al Tanzeel, Wa Asrar al Ta'wil. This is a tafsir of Imam Baydawi, Rahimahullah. In here he has mentioned the definition of Samad, that Allah is independent. He's mentioned, فَإِنَّهُ يَسْتَغْنِي عَنْ غَيْرِهِ مُطْلَقًا وَكُلُّ مَا عَدَاهُ مُحْتَاجِ إِلَيْهِ فِي جَمِيعِ جِهَاتِهِ The word of Samad means that Allah is independent and He is not in need of anything. And everything apart from Allah is in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Samad means. Now we say, like, Ibn Taymiyyah Ibn has mentioned that Allah has got body parts for doing actions. So why does the person use hand to fulfill his needs? So this is a sign of being hopeless. Because without the hand, a person cannot fulfill his, his needs. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is independent. Now if we're going to say Allah has got a hand, na'udh billah, that means Allah is in need of a hand. If we say Allah has got an eye, that will mean na'udh billah, Allah needs it. I, and even inevitably, this will go against the Quranic verse, Allahus Samad. Next verse which I would like to mention is فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا That do not make andad for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does andad mean? Andad means is the plural of nid. Nid, like Allama Ibn Mandur has mentioned, it means Al-Mithil wa Nadir, someone in comparison, someone in equal. Do not make any equals for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now if a person establishes hand for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you must also have hand. So isn't this giving comparison to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Isn't this making anyone equal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And something which I would like to mention here, that if names if there's equality or there's comparison inside names, it doesn't necessitate comparison and equality inside meaning. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said regarding himself, Ra'uf al Rahim, the most compa compassionate, most merciful. And he has also used the same for his Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So down there, the equality. The equality and the comparison is only inside the words. There is no comparison and there is no equality inside the meaning. Further, I would like to mention the fifth verse is Wallahu al Ghani al Hamid. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Ghani. Ghani, again, it means independent. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of anything. Now, Imam Fakhri Razi rahmatullah is mentioned. That if we're going to establish body parts, a'adha, for Allah, or jism, like Imam Ibn Taymiyyah has mentioned, and Shaykh Fawzan, and Shaykh Ibn Baz has mentioned, then that will go against this verse, because Allah says, al-ghani, that he is independent, he is not in need of anything. This will include body, this will include body parts, this will include hands, feet, etc. Moving further, these were few references from the Quran. I would like to give a few references from Ijma. Ijma, the consensus of the Ummah. First is Imam al Haramain, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Imam al Haramain, Al Juwaini, Rahimahullah. He has mentioned inside his book, Al Aqidatul Nawamiya fil Arkan al Islamiya on page 32. That the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala regarding the Sifat, they would leave 
the meaning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Sahaba. All of them. Ala tarki ta'arud li ma'aniha. And he further mentions, wa yakilu ma'anaha ila rabbi tabarak wa ta'ala. And they would consign the meaning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now he is saying that the Sahaba, the entire group of Sahaba, this was their aqidah. He has mentioned this inside his book, Al-Aqidah Al-Nidhamiyah fil Arkan Islamiyah, page 32, that the entire group of Sahaba and Sahaba are the best people after all the Prophets. The best people to walk on the surface of this earth after all the Prophets is none other than the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, and Mujma'een, whose Iman and Aqidah has been made a criteria to fall inside the Quran. فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ فَقَدِهْتَدَوْا If we bring Iman like the Sahaba brought Iman, indeed we will gain guidance, inshaAllah ta'ala. Further on, another ijma which I would like to quote is from Ibn Qudama al-Hanbali rahimahullah. He has mentioned inside his book Tahrim al-Nadhar fi Qutub al-Kalam on page 39. Tahrim al-Nadhar fi Qutub al-Kalam page 39. He has mentioned wahada and this, i.e. to consign the meaning of the sifat to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the aqidah of our salaf rahimahullah wa ta'ala. And we don't find any ikhtilaf. This is our aqeel of the salaf that they would consign that meaning. All of the salaf, without any istithna and exception. Further on, he mentioned in the same book on page 50 that there is no need to find out the meaning. There is no need to find out the meaning of these sifat. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want us to do any action through this sifat. The only thing he wants us to do is to bring Iman. That's the only thing we are ordered to do is to bring Iman. He hasn't told us to do any specific action. Therefore, we don't need to know these, the meaning of this sifat. And he further mentions, وَيُمْتِنُ الْإِيمَانِ بِهَا And it's possible to bring Iman on this sifat. مِنْ غَيْرِ عِلْمٍ مَعَنَاهَا Without having the knowledge of the meaning. Why? فَإِنَّ الْإِيمَانَ بِالْجَهْلِ الصَّحِيحِ To have Iman of something that's unknown is correct. Why? فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى For indeed Allah أمر بالإيمان He has ordered us to bring Iman بملائكته وكتبه ورسله On the angels, books and prophets وَمَا أَنزَلْ إِلَيْهِمْ وَمَا أُنزِلْ إِلَيْهِمْ And whatever has been revealed to them وَإِن كُنَّا لَا نَعْرِفْ مِنْ ذَلِكِ إِلَّا تَسْمِيَةً Even though many of the things we only know the names We only know the apparent names We don't know the details of the meaning Therefore bringing Iman is enough to know the detail of the meaning is not required inside Iman. I would like to mention another quote from Imam Ibn Qudama, rahimahullah, his famous book of Dhamm al-Ta'weel. Dhamm al-Ta'weel, I have this in front of me, it is called al rasail al sabah Seven great works. And the last work inside he, the last risala, the last article is of Ibn Qudama, rahimahullah, Dhamm al-Ta'weel. In here he has mentioned on page 363 page 363 Imam Ibn Qudam Rahimullah has mentioned that فَإِنَّ الصَّحَابَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ عَنْهُمْ أَجْمَعُ عَلَىٰ تَرْكِ بِمَا ذَكَرْنَا عَنْهُمْ وَكَذَارِ أَهْلُ كُلِّ أَصْرٍ بَعْدَهُ that all of the Sahaba have unanimously agreed to leave any interpretation. And similarly all those people that came after. Then he says, وَمِن بَعْدِهِمْ وَمِن بَعْدِهِمْ مِنَ الْأَيِمَّةِ قَدْ صَرَّحُوا بِالنَّحِي عَنِ التَّفْسِيرِ وَالتَّعْوِيلِ And those that came after, they've also explicitly mentioned that it's prohibited to do tafsir or ta'wil. وَأَمَرُوا بِإِمَرَاءِ هَذِي الْأَخْبَارِ كَمَا جَاءَتْ And they would pass through these verses However, they are. And then he further mentions that the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they will not be explained at all. Now to give, the, to give a literal meaning is this explanation. To give a literal meaning to the verses is not this explanation. Of course it is. That's why Imam, uh, Imam Ibn Qudam has mentioned that anna sifat Allah ta'ala wa asma'uh la tudarak bil aqr that the sifat of Allah and His attributes and His asma qualities, they cannot be attained through intellect. 
لأن الأقل إنما يعمل صفة ما صفة ما رآه أو رأى نظيرة. That the intellect can only know those things which it sees or sees anything which is equal to it. And Allah is free from all these things. He further mentions regarding sifat, we only break iman on the words and leaving the interpretation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is this is in the Mutawil of Ibn Qudama rahimullah wa ta'ala. Further, Imam Razi rahimullah has also transmitted an ijma. And this ijma that which Imam Razi rahimullah has transmitted is from the Sahaba. In his book Asas al Taqdis, Asas al Taqdis, page 140, he has mentioned that regarding the mutashabihat, the ambiguous verses and ahadith, the Sahaba would leave the meaning and consign the meaning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are a few quotes of Ijma from Ibn Qudam rahimahullah and Imam Razi rahimahullah and other famous scholars. Moving forward, after giving several Quranic verses and quotations of Ijma and consensus, I would like to move further, starting off with quotes of eminent scholars to prove the Aqidah, the true Aqidah of the Salaf, which is to consign the consign the meaning and to deny the modality regarding the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Ahl Sunnah, all of the false schools of thought and all those that came after all the way to Ulamai Duban, inshallah ta'ala, courts will be given. I've gathered over a hundred courts, but because less time inshallah I will give 40 or so courts inshallah ta'ala and I think for the person who is just and who is looking for the truth inshallah and who has love for haq and for the ahli haq I think these 40 courts with the Quranic verses and ijma I've given inshallah should be sufficient <laughs> حامل القرآن يا حامل